Flying Mosque in Peoria, Illinois, in front of an audience of 2,000, helping us celebrate our 100th anniversary, Tap Blue Ribbon Beer presents Blue Ribbon Town, starring Groucho Marx, with his gorgeous guest, the 20th century Fox glamour star, Dean Kiernan. Come on, 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 with lovely Dean Kearney as our traveling companion on our war bond and service camp tour, there's plenty of good music and merriment in Blue Ribbon Town tonight. Very present and accounted for are Faye McKenzie, Leo Dorsey, Bill Day, Robert Armbruster and his Blue Ribbon Blenders, yours truly, Derbert Kirby. And here at the station, waiting for a bus to take his troops to Peoria, is our train-happy, bus-happy, paps-happy host, Groucho Marx. Bus station, and I don't want anybody wandering off and getting lost. Where's my little glamour baby, Jean Candy? Oh, she's down at the end of the station, surrounded by autograph mothers, as usual. And no one. Oh, what a girl. What eyes. What lips. What teeth. She's got the teeth, and she's giving me the brush. <laughs> well, here she is, neighbors. A glorious girl of form divine. My favorite pin of Valentine. A Jean. A Candy. <laughs> Were you looking for me? Yes, I was looking for you. I looked in every nook and cranny. By the way, I got a letter from my cranny this morning. She's coming home for the holidays. Oh, Groucho, how you talk? Oh, I talk very easy. I just opened my mouth and out it flows, of course. Sometimes when it flows out too fast, it washes my bridge out. <laughs> well, everybody's here but Gorky. Where is that bozo from Brooklyn? I am, Mossy. Dorothy, where were you? Oh, I just buying some stuff for us to eat on the bus. You know, candy and peanuts. Did you get any hot popcorn? Look here, Marcy, none of this stuff is hot. Bought and paid for it on a square. Anyhow, I don't want to converse with you. Where's my little Faisy McKenzie? Your little Faisy McKenzie? Yeah. I really go for that, Lynn. Why, when I'm with her, I can't talk. I can't say a word. In fact, I'm unspeakable. <laughs> You certainly are. Say, Jean, they really showed us a wonderful time in Milwaukee. Yes, they did, Groucho. And wasn't that a lovely dance the top people gave to celebrate their 100th anniversary? Yes, it was. I certainly enjoyed dancing with you. Ah, Jean, you dance like a fawn. And I ought to know, I used to be a game warden. (laughs) Some fawn, eh, Jean? Shall we dance? Oh, Oh, look, Groucho, here comes Faye McKenzie. Ah, hello, Faye. What? Interesting woman, isn't she, what are you daydreaming about? I was just thinking about the wonderful party the cat people gave us. Oh, gosh, it was fun. Yes, I noticed you were pretty popular at the party, signing autographs and everything. By the way, when the sponsor's son asked you for your autograph, I noticed you put down your phone number, too. <laughs> phone number? That was my social security number. Hmm, no wonder every time I rang your room, I got Morgenthau. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Moxie, look at me. I'm all set for the bus trip. I just bought this book to read. It's the works of Charles Dickens. In fact, I just started one of the stories. Mm-hmm. Which one? Oh, the one about that fella's girlfriend. What fella's girlfriend? You know, Oliver's twist. <laughs> Groucho, here comes the bus. Uh, Mr. Mark? Yes? I, uh, uh, here's your bus to Peoria. So long. Wait a minute, bus driver. Aren't you going to drive us to Peoria? Sorry, I, I, sorry. I just got my notice from my draft board. Well, how about your wife taking your place as the bus driver? So taking my place? I've been taking her. She joined the wax last April. <laughs> You're a little wacky yourself. Now, how are we going to get to Peoria? Marcy, you ain't got a thing to worry about. I'll drive the whole bunch of you to Peoria. You? Well, Gorsi, you don't know anything about a bus. Who does? I was a bus boy for three years. <laughs> Come on, gang. On to Peoria! <laughs> You know, Kirby, there's one nice thing about working for a company that operates two big breweries. 
We get in on two big 100th anniversary parties. Last week, Milwaukee. Tonight, Peoria. Tomorrow, the world. Yes, Groucho? <laughs> It'll be a long, long time, Groucho, before our next 100-year party. I wouldn't be surprised. But there's one thing that we do think we ought to say. For a full century, our company has grown and prospered because we've always brewed and sold quality beers. Beers that were honestly made, beers that were honestly sold, premium beers that have made fast and loyal friends not only here in America, but in other countries, other continents, in faraway lands all over the world. And today you enjoy the best beer that all our hundred years of brewing skill can produce. Pabst Blue Ribbon, a delicious blend of 33 fine brews with the smooth, satisfying flavor that only full flavor blending can achieve. Well, neighbors, while we're on the bus to Peoria, we know of no more pleasant way of spending the time than listening to Bobby Armbruster, his orchestra, and the Blue Ribbon Blenders as they present that musical epic of double talk, Mersey Dose. Mercy don't you know, you know, you little and you diving, a kiddly diving too, wouldn't you? Yes, mercy don't you know, you know, you little and you diving, a kiddly diving too, wouldn't you? If the words sound queer and funny to your ear, a little bit jumble and jive be, sing there's big oats and don't skip oats and little and be. Oh, man, the goats, the goats, the little and the guy, the kiddly dive you do, Hey, Gossie, Gossie, stop driving so fast. Take your time. Yeah, keep your shirt on. Don't worry about a thing. I'm handling this bus just like a baby. Like a baby? Well, I think it's time to make a change. <laughs> you hadn't gotten around that last curve so fast, you could have picked up that hitchhiker at the hot dog stand. I did pick him up. You did? Sure. Who do you think that is in the front bumper wiping the mustard off his push? <laughs> Gossie. If you continue driving this fast, you're going to ruin the tires. Oh, I'm driving careful, Marcy. With these tires, i got to go slow. They're made out of that new kind of stuff. You know, sympathetic rubber. <laughs> sympathetic rubber. I've been driving a car for years, and my tires never showed any emotion. Of course, they blow up once in a while. <laughs> oh, Jean. Jean Penny. Where are you? I'm here, Groucho, in the back of the bus. Can I come over and sit next to you, Jean? Well, I don't know, Groucho. There's only room for one. Well? Well, you're not the one. <laughs> Hello, Mr. Marks. Hello, Miss Tierney. Hello, Bill. Won't you sit down here next to me? Thank you, Miss Tierney. I'd love to. Jean, how is it that you wouldn't let me sit next to you and you're asking Bill to? Well, there are so many things I like about Bill. He has such nice manners. Well, I have nice manners, too. And Bill sings so sweetly. Well, I sing sweetly, too. And Bill is so good-looking. Well... <laughs> Don't have to laugh quite so loud at that. <laughs> oh, you shouldn't worry about it, Groucho. I'm sure that somewhere, someplace, there's a girl for you. You mean you really think there's a girl who would learn to love me, Jean? Oh, yes, Groucho. You know what they say. It takes all kinds of people to make a world. Gee, I didn't know it took those kinds. Gossy, Gossy, what's wrong with the bus? I don't know, Moxie. Maybe before I left, I should have had the battery discharged. And before I left, I should have had you discharged. Don't worry, Moxie, don't worry about nothing. I'll have this boiler fixed in a jiffy. I'll go out and clean the plugs. From what I've heard, the plugs have been cleaning you. <laughs> See anything wrong with the motor, Leo? Can't tell yet, but I'll soon find out. You know, I got a mechanic's mind. Yeah, well, it's too bad you didn't bring the rest of them along, too. <laughs> Do you suppose it could be the radiator? Hey, it might be the accelerator. Nah, it's the bicarburetor. <laughs> I think it's the degenerator. And, Gorsi, you can take that personally. Say, Groucho, I know what's wrong with the car. Show sure enough. <laughs> We're out of gas. Out of gas? Out of gas? 
That's funny. I put in two gallons. <laughs> you know, Mr. Marks, here's a remarkable coincidence. Well, I don't see any. I mean, today is Lincoln's birthday. And here we are traveling through the part of the United States known as the Lincoln Country. Just think, Abe Lincoln might have trudged on this very road, and he became president. Gorsi, how would you like to be president? President? Sure, that sounds like pretty steady work. <laughs> Steady, it's a lifetime job. <laughs> anyway, what's running out of gas got to do with me becoming president? Well, Lincoln used to walk 15 miles for a book along this road before he became president. All you have to do is walk 10 miles for a book. My sea book. While our Blue Ribbon Toners wait for future President Gorsi to return with Groucho Seabook, Faye McKenzie has some sound advice for a way to save fuel this winter. Huddle up a little closer. Faye? Okay. Cuddle up a little closer, love you. Hey, Gene, wasn't it fun last week in Milwaukee picturing life a hundred years ago when Pap's place started? Oh, yes, it was, Groucho. By the way, does Peoria go back that far, too? Does Peoria go that far back? Why, like, Peoria goes back all the way to Bloomington. <laughs> Anyhow, I think a hundred years from now will really be the mechanical age. Robots will do all our work and we'll fly from planet to planet. Yes, of course, without the planet that way. I can, I... <laughs> I can just picture the typical American family in the year 2044. The little woman is waiting for her husband. Gee, futuristic marks to come home from the pool room, from the office. <laughs> she is talking to her neighbor on the television phone. Hello, Mary. Oh, what a cute dress you have on. Don't stand so close to your television phone. I want to see the skirt. Oh, my, it's darling. I'm sorry I didn't call you sooner, but I was over in London this morning trying to get my hair waved. No, I couldn't. You know how things are in Europe. Nothing permanent. I'm expecting Groucho any minute now. He usually flies home from the office about this time in the helicopter. Yes, he makes wonderful speed. He has an awful lot of trouble landing the thing. Oh, I think I hear him now. Uh-oh. That's Groucho, all right. He's come through the roof again. Hello there. Anybody home? Oh, Groucho, you're so careless. Why do you always come through the roof this way? Because I like an open house. <laughs> now, don't aggravate me, dear. I just got a ticket on the way home for speeding. That darn Sky Patrol cop was hiding in a cloud. <laughs> I would have gotten away from him, too, but he caught me with my wing flaps down. <laughs> well, let's go into dinner. Wait. Before we go into dinner, I have something important to tell you. Something very important. Let, uh, let's not discuss it now. I've, 
I've had a hard day at the office. Business is terrible. But this is more important than business. There is nothing more important than business. Especially when business is terrible. <laughs> oh, that's all you think about. Business, business, business. What did you say? I said business, business, business. Dad, that's more business than I've done in the last 20 years. <laughs> Gene, we might as well face it. For a long time now, I've... I've had my back against the wall. You mean because business is so bad? No, because my back itches. <laughs> Stop being facetious, Groucho, and listen to me. Yes, Jeannie? Well, we've been married a good many years. Oh, it's longer than that. <laughs> yes, it is. That's why it hurts me so to have to tell you this. You see... Well, hello, 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 and how are we this fine and lovely evening? I knew you were home, just saw you drop in through the roof. Thought I'd drop in too, and I like to do things the hard way. That's why I came through the door. <laughs> <laughs> of course, we're all entitled to our own way of life, don't you think so? Well, I think... I don't agree with you, but we'll discuss that later. I want to introduce myself. I represent the Fly-By-Night Helicopter Company. Our newest model is a sensation of the stratosphere. It has great maneuverability, goes up, down, backwards, and sideways. Of course, it won't go frontwards, but we're working on that. <laughs> Can't expect miracles, you know. No, but but I That's don't what need you another. Think. That's what you think. Ah, oh, it's wonderful to be able to fly one of our machines. You soar among the clouds just like you were an angel. In fact, most of our customers are angels. <laughs> <laughs> but don't let that worry. A life insurance policy is a standard equipment with our helicopters. But I already oh, come, have. Come, come, a... don't stop there. Don't stand there drooling like a schoolgirl when I've got work to do. Sign the order. Never mind. I'll sign it for you there. Oh, uh, my my, you have terrible handwriting. Well, so long. <laughs> Groucho, now that he's gone, I'd like to tell you what's on my mind. Oh, don't bother me with trifles now. I, I want to relax. Let's turn on the television radio set and see what's on the air. And here in his parlor at 33 Blue Ribbon Lane is our Pab Happy host, Groucho Mark. Dad, is he still on the air? <laughs> that man must be 150 years old. And that's pretty near as old as his jokes. <laughs> but I hear he doesn't chase women like he used to. No, he doesn't. Now he chases them in a jet-propelled wheelchair. By the way, uh, where's our son, Leo? Oh, he'll be home soon. He went to visit one of his girlfriends on another planet. Did you let him take the family rocket ship again? He's always making believe he's running out of powder so he can park a neck. Well, he's young. What's wrong with that? Nothing, but on his last date, he parked on the Milky Way so long, he came home homogenized. <laughs> Groucho, you listen to me. It's very important. Well, here I am, matter and patter. I can hear the patter, but what's the matter? About time you got home. What on earth have you been doing? On earth, nothing. But I just had a heck of a time with a dame on Jupiter. A heck of a time with that line, too, huh? Well, by Jupiter, why are you so late? Well, the dame wanted me to meet her family. And you know them people on Jupiter, they all have six pairs of arms. That still doesn't explain why you're late. By the time you get through shaking hands with them people, it ain't exactly oily. <laughs> and that reminds me, Pop. Her old man wants you to come up to Jupiter so he can meet you. Oh, fine, but I'm not quite sure how to get to Jupiter. That's a breeze. Just head for the Milky Way, see? Uh, yeah, the Milky Way. And keep going till you get to Saturn. Uh, to Saturn? Yeah. Uh, then take a shortcut through the big diaper. For... <laughs> diaper. He must have come by way of Pennsylvania. <laughs> Anyhow... Then you just keep going straight ahead. Yeah, and will, uh, will that get me to Jupiter? Might get you there. Personally, I always wind up in Chillicothe. <laughs> oh, so long, cranky puss. Don't park in any cloud banks. You're welcome. Groucho. Uh, yes, Jean? I've been trying to tell you ever since you came home. Yes, Jean? I love another. Another what? Another man. What? After all these years, my own wife, the mother of my backward child... <laughs> In love with another man? Oh, I wish I were dead. Dead! Do you hear me? Dead! Now, isn't that silly if I were dead? How could she hear me? <laughs> but, Jeannie, you, uh, you can't mean that you're really leaving me. Yes, I am, Grasso. And I hope you'll take it like a man. Or a reasonable facsimile thereof. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is breaking my heart. It's... It's more than I can bear. More than I can bear. Oh, please, Groucho, don't cry. Calm yourself. There, there. What have I done to deserve this kind of treatment? Oh, this is more than I can bear. More than I can... <laughs> oh. Groucho, don't carry on that way. You'll get over it. Oh. Really, you will. 
<laughs> ah, shut up. Oh, this is more than I can bear. More than I can bear. I must be pretty bad by now. <laughs> but tell me, who is this scoundrel who has come between us? Ronald Robot. Ronald Robot? You mean you're in love with a mechanical man? That's unheard of. Oh, don't be so old-fashioned. A lot of women love men of steel. Don't forget, this is 2044. 2044? Yes, 2044. Is that for two pair of pants? <laughs> Here comes Ronald now. Ah, oh, here he is, my Ronald, my magnificent, masterful, mechanical man. Darling, I love you. <laughs> Quiet, you rusty Romeo. Gene, how can you possibly leave me for this fugitive from a scrap metal drive? Darling, I love you. Oh, he's so tall and so handsome. Groucho, look at his beautiful, wavy hair. Beautiful. Wavy. A worse mess of steel wool I've never seen. <laughs> that guy's just a hunk of junk. Darling, I love you. <laughs> Darling, I love you. Brilliant conversationalist. <laughs> Why, you tin horn two-timer, I'll get a can opener and cut your heart out. Please, Groucho. Oh, Ronald, I'm sorry you've been subjected to this humiliation. Will you forgive me? Darling, I love you. <laughs> Darling, I love you. Darling, I love you. Take me a one-track lover. <laughs> Gene, what's happened to your boyfriend? He's run down, poor fellow. Why don't you take him to the garage and have his motor overhauled? <laughs> That's just what I'll do, smarty. Gene, you'll never be happy with that metal man. You're bound to have a scrap. <laughs> you can't. You can't talk me out of it. I'm leaving. Well, while you're gone, uh, here's something for you to think about. I, too, am in love with a robot. My steel secretary, Roberta Robot. <laughs> Roberta Robot? Roberta Robot. Why, why, she's Ronald's sister. I certainly don't know what you can see in her, the hussy. Ah, uh, Roberta Robot. What a wonderful girl. 112 pounds of galvanized glamour. <laughs> she's got the tin I love to touch. Groucho, this can't be true. You can't prefer this ridiculous robot girl to me. After all, I'm a woman. I'm alive. I have real eyes to see with, real hands to hold, real lips to kiss. You can't prefer this mechanical maiden to me. Oh, but I do. But why? Well, there's one great thing that I can do with her that I can never do with you. What's that? I can trade her in every year on a new model. <laughs> Well, here we are back in the 20th century, and this is Derwood Kirby taking just a moment for Pap to thank all those who sent in their post-war employment plans in competition for the $50,000 Pap Post-War Employment Awards. The competition closed last Monday, and as you can guess, this has been a mighty busy week at the awards committee headquarters. Thousands of manuscripts have already been received, and although all entries had to be postmarked not later than midnight last Monday, the mails are still bringing in additional plans from faraway places, not only in America, but from Americans in other countries as well. And we of PAPS take real pride in the tremendous response the PAPS Awards have brought forth. And we are most hopeful that the competition, established in observance of the 100th anniversary of the founding of our business, will make a real contribution toward a better post-war America. And so again, to all the competitors for the PAPS Awards, our sincere thanks for your part in making the awards an unqualified success. Well, neighbors, returning to Blue Ribbon Town, we hear Bill Days entertaining the jam-packed crowd in Peoria Auditorium by singing one of their old favorites, I See Your Face Before Me. Bill? I discovered somebody who could be truly worthy and true. Yes, I met my ideal when I met you. I see your face before me, crowding my every dream. There is your face before me, 
You are my only team. It doesn't matter where you are. I can see how fair you are. I close my eyes and there you are. Oh, if you could share the magic. If you could see me too, there would be nothing tragic in all my dreams of you. Would that my love could hold you so, knowing I want you so. I can't erase your beauty. Well, Jean, it's time to say goodnight, and I want to tell you how nice it's been having you with us on our trip. Oh, thank you, Groucho. And I've had a lot of fun. Where do we go from here? Well, the governor of Kansas has invited us to a big war bond rally in Topeka next Monday. You wouldn't want to miss that, would you, Jean? Oh, not for the world. And then next Saturday, you'll be back on your own home ground, back in Blue Ribbon Town, won't you? Yes, and I'll be glad to get back, despite the fact that I like Peoria. I just got a wire from Orson Wells, and he promises to come to Blue Ribbon Town next week to welcome us. So for tonight, this is the end. Or as Shakespeare would say, Orson Welles that ends Welles. <laughs> Good night, Tini, old gal. Good night, Groucho, old boy. Parting is such sweet sorrow. Good night, everybody. Good night, everybody. <laughs> Remember, it's Orson Welles with Groucho Marx and Company in Blue Ribbon Town next Saturday. So come on down. Dean Tierney appeared on this program through the courtesy of 20th Century Fox. This program was directed by Dick Mack and was brought to you by the Pabst Brewing Company of Milwaukee, Wisconsin, and Peoria, Illinois. Ah, Peoria. My, my uncle used to live in Peoria. He was a poet. They called him the Bard of Peoria. They did? Yes, he was barred from every joint in town. <laughs> oh, well, good night, neighbors. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System.